welcome to Gethsemane Lutheran Church for our Sunday morning worship service. Our mission is to be engaged by God in a living faith at home, at church, and in the world. And we hope that through these services, we help you to be part of that mission. We encourage you to connect with us through our website at glconline.org and let us know how we can help you on your journey. Now, let us worship together. Welcome to Gethsemane's online worship. We pray that wherever you are, whenever you are watching this, that God engages you in a living faith because together we are the church. Today is All Saints Sunday, a special day in our church year when we remember all those who have gone on before us in faith because their legacy remains within us. We invite you to take out a candle to be a part of this service because those that you are remembering continue to be a light in your life. We give thanks for all those who have laid the groundwork of faith for us. I invite you to hear this message from the Gethsemane Memorial Foundation, who have been stewards for many years of all those who have given their gifts for the sake of the church. I am Stephanie Nelson, current president of the Gethsemane Memorial Foundation. Today is All Saints Sunday, where we remember all those who have gone before us in faith and the impact they have made on our lives. The Gethsemane Memorial Foundation has been supporting the mission of our church for over 50 years. Gifts given to the foundation those many years ago still have an impact today. Each year, the foundation supports our youth in camp and mission trip scholarships, supports our local community partners, and much more. This legacy of faith lives on in each of us, and we too can impact those around us. Gifts to the foundation can be made in a number of ways. They can be one-time gifts or long-term gifts by including the foundation in your will or as a beneficiary to a life insurance or retirement account. Your generosity to the Memorial Foundation supports our church both today and in the future. On behalf of the foundation, we thank you for your support and encourage you to continue the legacy of faith.
remember those saints who have gone before us. We lament, we lament their, their passing. passing. Those who followed the way of Christ faithfully. We, we follow, follow their, their example. example. Those who made mistakes along the way. We, we learn, learn from, from their experience. experience. Those who made progress for peace. We, we continue, continue their work. work. Those who gained honor and distinction without pride. We, we are humbled by them. them. May the peace of Christ continue to inspire us. To, to good, good works, humility, simplicity, and in peace. Peace. Amen. 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 Today's gospel passage is from Matthew 5, 1 through 12. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in spirit, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from God our Father and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Last month I invited people to pray with me on Wednesday afternoons. I know that some of you participated by praying in your cars, in your offices, and at home, but each week a few people joined me here in the sanctuary. And every week I would sit in a different pew, always different from the one I normally sit up here in the front when we gather for worship in person. And as I sat looking at the front of the sanctuary with the cross and the altar, the beautiful stained glass window and the baptismal font, all kinds of images and all kinds of stories of this hallowed place and of all of you came to mind. I remembered delivering children's sermons with the innocent interruptions of our youngest members trying to make sense of their faith. I remember holding a candle on Christmas Eve and looking out at all of you gathered with extended families and friends as together we sang Silent Night. I remembered confirmations and funerals, baptisms and weddings. I remember sitting during many Sisters in Spirit retreats as we were absolutely freezing in this place and times in the summer when we sat together waving our church fans hoping to create at least some element of a breeze. I remembered names and faces like how Dominic used to stand right inside the aisle as folks came up for communion and offer his hand as an extension of peace. And I remember Kristen Skold trying to catch my eye each week as we processed in for the second service so that I could offer a wink and a smile in her direction. I remember the time that Sydney Clays offered me the sign of the cross on my forehead after I had given her communion. And as I sat in this space, I remembered VOP up in their corner at the early service and the senior choir in their matching robes in the balcony at the second service. I remember that the Pattersons sit in the front lectern side and that Jim and Lois Rydeski sit in the back of the pulpit side and across the aisle from them along the back row in the chairs is Vianne Engwall, Amy Adamson, Edna Arvidsson, Jan Quist, and Barb Krieg. Frank and Linda Petruska sit in the front at the first service, and Jim and Mary Shirley do at the second service. And at both services, our youngest families find an unoccupied pew and spread out with their worship bags and Cheerios to tide them over. Of course, I remembered Christmas pageants, new member welcomes, and sending our kids to camp. 
our young people on mission trips, and our travelers to El Salvador, each blessed by the love and support of this congregation. I could picture our pews adorned with quilts and school kits waiting to be sent out around the globe, also blessed by you. I remember sharing communion every week, carefully and lovingly prepared by Linda Benson and served by our dedicated volunteers and assisting ministers. And I could see your faces in the places that you all most often sit. As I prayed, I remembered the important life moments that we share in this holy place, from the ordinary to the festive, to the final farewells and the new beginnings, the joyful, the tearful, the laughter, and every once in a while, even a round of applause. And I was in those moments humbly blown away. As I sat in our now mostly unused space, I thanked God for all of you because together we are the church. And your presence, whether virtual, by memory, in spirit, or in real time, reveals the light of Christ. To put it simply, you are the saints, or the revelation of Christ in this place. As Martin Luther discovered in his prolific studies of scripture, the word saint is used in the New Testament only and always to refer to all Christians. So it's a synonym for all Christians. According to his biblical interpretation, the term is never used to refer to the best or the most virtuous or the most faithful Christians, like St. Mary or St. Peter. So then every time we gather to worship, wherever we are, we are connected to a whole communion of saints. We are connected to all Christians, which includes all of the faithful who have come before us, those who live right now, and those that are yet to come. As we celebrate All Saints Day today, we are especially remembering the members and friends of Gethsemane who have died over the past years. In a few moments, their names will be read, and we will share a picture of them on the screen. Their presence continues to be felt among us now as we are just getting acclimated to life without them alongside of us. During these COVID times, it's been particularly hard to say goodbye to loved ones as some families are separated and haven't been able to gather around their loved one as they pass from this life to the next. And many families haven't been able to gather for funerals or a memorial service. And still, God has blessed us through these people. And God has blessed us by the lives of those who have died much longer ago. I am sure all of you can remember the names and the faces of the people whose lives have revealed Christ to you over the years, whether it was here at church, in your homes, or in your community. The traditions and work that was done by generations of people in faith continue to shape this place, shape our traditions and our life together. An important part of the communion of saints was represented in the young people who were confirmed here last Sunday. As they shared their faith expressions with us, we got just a foretaste of the direction that the church will need to move into in order to continue to speak into experiences in the world of our young people. And while it may look different than the church of our past, I'm convinced that their voices will lead us to become the church that will speak faithfully to the saints yet to come. What connects each of us to this communion of saints that reaches all the way back even further than the very beginning of Gethsemane to the earliest believers and all the way forward to a church that is yet to be imagined is not our doctrine. It's not our beautiful building, our stained glass windows, our traditions, and even our hymns, or our place in the community. We are connected by the love of God that is made known to us in Jesus Christ. In our gospel passage today, 
Jesus offers a message to his original audience that is spoken directly to each one of us as well. In a radical act of love, Jesus does not offer a strict set of expectations or rules on how to live in the kingdom of God, but instead, he blesses us. He acknowledges that our lives, like the saints that have traveled before us and those that are yet to come, will indeed include good times, times when we will be merciful, when we'll be able to work together for a peace that is greater than the world knows, and times that we might be pure in heart as we look at one another with love and acceptance in spite of all that divides us. And our lives will inevitably include difficult times, times when we feel separated from God, times when we know the pain left from hunger and desire for things that we cannot earn or do not have, and times when we will be persecuted for our beliefs. Jesus looks across the group of people and says to all of us who have ever hurt or who have ever grieved, have struggled, felt afraid, alone, or abused, all of us who live on occasion with the heaviness of worry, depression, or anxiety and addiction, and says simply, I love you. I love you. In this text, we hear beyond a doubt that God sees us, God honors us, blesses us, and accompanies us in whatever comes our way. We are connected to the communion of saints by the grace that has been poured out abundantly to all people. As a ritual reminder of the community of saints that surrounds us at all times and unites us in abundant blessing and love that is pure gift, you are invited now to light a candle. Light a candle in honor of a loved one that has revealed the light of Christ to you. Take a moment now to focus on the light that has been exposed to you through the communion of saints. As we continue to walk in a world that seems chock full of divisions, anger, restlessness and isolation, may you find comfort in the fact that we are held together by something much deeper and much more tender than all that divides us these days. May you find joy in your memories of worshiping in the congregation that formed you, whether it was here at Gethsemane or elsewhere. May you find solace in the grace freely given across generations by a God who names you knows you, and claims you as God's very own. And may you rest in the assurance that you are part of the communion of saints initiated and sustained by the grace of God. Amen. Since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, Looking to Jesus, we remember this day all those saints from our community who now rest in God's arms. Kim Aguilar. Daryl Anderson. Robert Anderson. Stanley Anderson. Evelyn Asplin. Richard Barsness. Lorraine Bingham. Roland Borgman. Donald Carlson. Joyce Carlson. Betty Lou Courtney. Lorene Daly. Gerald Evans. Reverend Arland Fisk. Lana Furin. Herman Hasselbring. Mary Ellen Johnston. Leola Josephson. Chanley Lundgren. Ian Matuska. Alice Nelson.
David Needing. Robert Olin. James Runquist. Ernest Severson. Dorothy Seidler. Violet Simon. James Sletten. Dorothy Soberg. Lucille Soderhorn. Russell Thompson. Patricia Tevberg. David Wenzel. John Workala. August Ewell. As you receive our siblings who have gone to their rest in the hope of the resurrection to eternal life, bring us at last with them into the light of your presence, that in union with all your saints, we might give you glory forever. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for the evangelists and martyrs whose sacrifices witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new people and places around us. Lord of every place, the universe proclaims your greatness from generation to generation. Bless the work of naturalists, conservationists, and park rangers who train our attention to the wonders of the world you have made. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision to match his own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. We remember before you those who are among us who are sick, mourning, or recovering from illness. We remember especially this week Mary Shirley, Tim Jacobson, and Scott Allen. And we pray for each of our individual concerns we lift up to you in the silence of our hearts. Comfort their hearts and ours with your healing presence. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kinder hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Empower testimony from new communities of faith to shape a diverse witness to your saving power. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until the day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Remember us in your kingdom, O God, and teach us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will, will be done, on, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. God has shown you what is good. What does the Lord require of you? but to do justice, to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. And now may the God of love, the grace of Jesus Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen. Amen.